Hey guys, so I've talked a lot about different computer builds and stuff, but one of my favorite computers that I really don't talk about much, and I really should because it's an awesome computer, is the Raspberry Pi. And I've been following the Raspberry Pi for a while now since it was really first initially brought to market, shown off as more of like an enthusiast board, and then eventually kind of turned into more of a consumer brown product as well because you can load Linux on it and this little guy can be a full-fledged computer you can also load something called RetroPie on it, and all of a sudden, it's a full-fledged gaming device. It's really cool, and it's evolved over the years to where now it's actually a pretty strong little device that has things like base, you know, basic capabilities like Wi-Fi built in, has a full uh, LAN port on the back and everything, several USB ports, and it's really gotten much faster with a quad-core processor and a full gig of RAM, and now... You can get a Model B Raspberry Pi 3 anywhere from $35 to $40, depending on where you buy it from. And anything you're going to see in this video, you know, I'll just throw links down in the description for you guys if you really are looking into this. Because I'm also, I also bought a starter kit that will give you things like a case and a power supply because these little guys don't really come with much. It's usually just the board. But you know what? Let's first get this guy open and the starter kit open and kind of install the Raspberry Pi in a case and kind of go over the basics with you guys. So I have two different things here. I have the Raspberry Pi 3 itself, of course, and then a casing and accessories uh, order that I did that should give us things like a case. It'll even give us a heat sink and the power cord and everything, which is great. You will have to get an HDMI cord, which most of us, I'm sure, have them at our house since we use them for most of our game consoles. Let's just go ahead and open this guy up first. This is the Raspberry Pi 3, how you will receive it pretty much. This is the Model B, which should be the newest one. It has Wi-Fi built in, which is awesome. And really, there's not much to it. It comes with this and some paperwork. And that's pretty much it. Now, the paperwork kind of goes over compliances and stuff like that. Just show you everything's on the up and up with this guy. Safety information. Not much is there for you because this is more of an enthusiast thing. It doesn't really explain a lot. <laughs> so let's open the static bag. And this is our Raspberry Pi 3. This is what you're looking to get. And this, believe it or not, right here, guys, is the entire computer. This is everything. Everything is on this board. Now, from this side going forward, we have our HDMI port here. It's great because it's full size, not like a mini HDMI port. We have our power cord there, headphone auxiliary jack, USB ports on the back. We have four, uh, Ethernet NIC port there. And then from there, that's about it. We have uh, headers here you can use for different expansion, uh, different spots here. You can actually attach a screen pretty easily to this model, which is great. And that's about it. We have on the bottom here, we have our SD card reader, and that's what we pop the SD card in, the, uh, the micro one, and that'll actually give us our operating system and everything working there. So let's put this guy down to the side for a second. Let's open this accessory box that I got for it that kind of makes everything, brings everything together. I will put a link to all of this stuff, like I said, down in the description. So if you want to just get something like I'm using here, you could do that. Now, once we open this guy up, this was like 12 bucks for everything, which isn't bad, but it has a casing, which is pretty important. You might as well get a casing for it because, you know, you don't want the circuit board to be completely exposed. Heat sinks, like I said, which we'll put on some of the chips, which is cool. A uh, cable here, which is interesting because it has an interrupt button because this technically has no power button unless you install one, which you can install one. But in this case, this makes it really easy because this will actually turn on and off. You can just use it that way. Otherwise, you have to unplug it, plug it in. And uh, that can kind of affect it unless you shut it down correctly, of course. And it comes with a pretty strong power brick. You don't want to... Now, it doesn't pull a lot of power, but you definitely don't want to starve it for power. This is a 2.5 amp brick at 5 volts, which is perfect. That's plenty. Um, a lot of people do use their cell phone adapter as well, if, they, if they're in a pinch, if they need to, because this technically doesn't come with a power cord, guys. Like I said, they, they make it very cheap at around $35 to $40, but they also don't give you anything. And that's just the way it goes. So let's pop this guy open. It's pretty straightforward how it all lines up. This isn't the best case. You can get better cases, but realistically, at this point, I just went for cheap pretty much and just got the easiest one I could for it. So let's go ahead and put this guy in here. I'd like to at least put a, a heat sink on the two big chips on the top because obviously you have your CPU and then your accompanying chip. I just like to at least, you know, it doesn't hurt. So why not? I know some people say you don't have to and you definitely don't. But I've seen people water cool these things, so I figure the least I can do is just stick a little heat sink to the top of it, so why not? Because it's already, uh, already has adhesive on the bottom. You pretty much just find that guy, there's plenty of clearance in the case, and you just stick it right to it. That's pretty much it. It's passively cooled with that then. You don't need a fan or anything, how a lot of people put like fans and stuff on their heat sinks for the computer. This chip does not get that hot, um, and the heat sink's only going to help, realistically, because you can get these chips pretty hot if you don't do that. Um, it, it's not going to like overheat or anything, but... 
you know what, why not? This also gives a little headroom if you do want to overclock it, if you're going to try to play some games on it like we will be today. I'm not going to overclock it, but I will be playing some games. So we'll put it on that guy there, and that's it for the heat sinks. We have some nice little heat sinks on there now, and we're just going to close it up and screw it together, and that's it for the case, guys. Now that we've built the Raspberry Pi completely and it's like ready to go, we're going to plug it in, obviously, but first we need to figure out a way to get an operating system on here because this has zero operating system at all on it right now. It's just a board, so it won't be able to function at all. And the way we do this is we use a micro SD card. Remember how we were using those for things like your 3DS XL, for example, or your, your cell phone, your Samsung device, for example, or maybe your Switch? It uses the same SD cards. Now you want to get one that's halfway decent. I I would at least recommend a class 10 or a uh, UH1 as they call it. Um, I would at least get one of those. So it has a little bit of speed and realistically storage space is up to you. You could get, you know, 128 gig, you get a 64 gig. It depends on what you want to do with it. But what I'm going to do guys is show you how to do that. It's very easy, very easy. Um, all you really want to get started with obviously are a couple of these little guys. I have two here and I have installed two different OS's on each one. I have Raspbian on this one, which is your typical um, like, like computer environment where you start it up and Linux will come up. And then the other one I have RetroPie, which is the kind of the emulation uh, device that everyone uses it with the software and everything. You pop it in, you can load up all your ROMs, and it plays perfectly, especially with how much better it has become with the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. And I'm just going to kind of walk you through very quickly how to do this. If you go to Raspbian or just Google Raspbian for Raspberry Pi 3, it comes up, you download Raspbian Jesse, it's very easy, it's like a, a gig and a half, it unpacks to about four gigs, and then you want to get some kind of software because now we have to then write it or burn it, as they say, to one of these micro SD cards. And of course, the easiest way to do that is to use a laptop because with your laptop and a little SD card adapter, you can plug it in and it'll work fine because it'll pick it up and then you burn right to it. If you don't have one though, you can also get one of these guys, which is like a little, it's, it's a USB to micro SD card and it just kind of slides in, lets you plug it into any USB port. Uh, more, most time though, if you have a laptop of any kind nowadays, especially you have that front port to then plug it in. From there, you want to download a free program called Etcher. And what Etcher does is it basically recognizes this interesting operating system and image that Windows may not be able to. Some I've seen sometimes Windows 10 does, but for the most part, if you use Etcher and you write to that SD card with that image, it makes it super easy. You click, you know, uh, burn image, it'll select the image, you select your SD card, hit burn, and that's it. You'll know it worked when it kind of disappears out of your My Computer uh, option, you'll see the uh, the SD card completely disappear and it comes up and asks if you want to format it in Windows. Just say no, cancel it, pop it out. You're probably ready to go then. So now that we have that done, very easy. We take our Raspberry Pi, there's an SD card slot down here. We take the micro SD card and you slide it in so it matches up and it's, that's it. <laughs> we're, we're ready to roll. We can plug it in and we can we can start this guy up. So you know, let's, let's get over here guys, take a look at it. So after you put the SD card in, you power it up. Uh, it's a very quick setup. You don't have to touch anything when you're booting into Raspbian. It'll do all the work for you and then it'll kick you out to this screen that you're seeing right here. And you may be looking at that and maybe be a little confused. This is a Linux desktop here built for Raspberry Pi. So it is a fully functioning computer. Yes, you can use it for a couple things. I do see some people travel with these because you can do basic word processing, for example, with it. You can also surf the web. It does have Wi-Fi. See up here, I went ahead and pre-connected it before I started recording. So with my password and everything's not out there for obviously my, my wireless internet. Uh, also has Bluetooth, which is cool as well. Um, and because it plugs in through HDMI, it could take advantage of the speakers that's on your TV also. So Raspbian has basically all the drivers set up. You don't have to touch anything. It's, it's really cool. Um, now, like I said before, it does have, here we go, it does have a full web browser. It's using Chromium, actually, which is kind of a, a form of Chrome. And it does have the ability to play YouTube videos. So even if you want something you can kind of travel around with and like watch YouTube, you can do that and it'll work fine. Like maybe you uh, want to take it with you and you're, you travel around a lot and you're going to like, I guess, a hotel room or something and you just want to plug it in and do it, you can. It's nice because the Raspberry Pi 3 does have Wi-Fi built in, which is, was not always the case. I'll say that usually we had to get really terrible wireless dongles, plug it in and just try to get it to work and it was a whole thing. Whereas now it works great. As you can see here, it's working fine. You know, guys, we're getting pretty close. Um, so right it, it. Now, and that's a
Skipping ahead can be kind of a pain, but sometimes that's just like the connection. But overall, it's playing here fine. I'm not sure what resolution this is sitting at. Let's see if we can. So set it auto uh, 480p. Let's put it to 1080 and see what happens here. A little curious to see if it can handle 1080p uh, streaming. So it's thinking about it. Oh, okay. Maybe. Maybe. And we're being. Treated. It's a little choppy, but it's getting the job done. Um, so really, if you use it as a... Okay, there we go. It's run fine. So yes, it works fine for that. Um, and what's great is if I close this out, this is pretty funny. They also included uh, Minecraft on here called Minecraft Pi. So we can actually go ahead and just create a new game and it will be Minecraft. You can play Minecraft. And this was kind of cool. I don't know, this is something they added in there, you know, under games instead of solitaire. Hey, they give you Minecraft. There you go. Let's let it build the terrain and see how this guy does. I'll try loading it up. Oh yeah, there's Minecraft. And what's really cool about this, guys, is the Raspberry Pi does not need a fan, so it is silent. So you can also use this for a couple other applications. You can use it for recording sound, because of course you can always hear, if you're trying to do very quiet sound, very sensitive stuff, um, like maybe music recording or even deep voiceover, this works great because you don't have to worry about a fan um, being picked up. You know, it works great, and it's very small, obviously, very portable. You can even run it off a battery, technically. Um, so, this is, uh, yeah, it's, it runs pretty smoothly, as you can see. Everything works well. Um, yeah, so you get Minecraft right out of the box, which is kind of funny. It's, it's, it's a, you know, a toned-down version. It's not, you know, the Minecraft, but it's still cool. Um, so let's quit out of that, and let's start um, <laughs> what people usually get these for. Uh, and that is, generally, guys, to emulate games, because it is a really, really good emulator. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use RetroPie, like I talked about before. Now, you saw that I burned two different uh, two different SD cards. You don't have to do anything other than switch those SD cards when it's off to change between something like a fully functional computer and RetroPie. In fact, if you keep all the ROMs and everything on that SD card, you can travel with two of those SD cards and switch them out depending on what you need to do. Very cool. So I'm going to go ahead and switch the SD card out and load up RetroPie. So let's go ahead and do that. So guys, here we are when we first start up uh, the RetroPie app. Again, it will do all of this and then it'll jump you to a screen saying that it detects something like the controller that you've plugged in. So make sure you have your controller that you want to use plugged in first. In this case, I have an Xbox One controller plugged in just to make things easy getting through it. So I'm going to start by just going through up, down, and you just map these buttons. It's awesome. It makes it so easy. Start, select, we'll do A, B, X, Y, left shoulder, right shoulder, left trigger, right trigger, left thumb, right thumb, left hand. Okay, yeah, so left thumb, right thumb, Left analog up, down. You just go through and just do all this real quick. So the one thing you'll notice here, guys, is when you start it up, you don't have anything other than the RetroPie and configuration. Even if you go through configuration, it won't do much. And that's because we have to actually add games, the ROMs even. Um, so what you do is you take a USB stick, you format it completely. On the root of it, you open it, you create a folder that's called RetroPie. You take that USB stick out of your computer, plug it in your RetroPie, give it a couple minutes, Take it out of there, pop it back in your laptop or computer, and it should have all the folders there. And then you just put the ROMs in zip format right in any folder that it corresponds to. So of course, if you have a Super Nintendo ROM, put it in the Super Nintendo folder. It's pretty straightforward. Once you do plug the USB back in with the ROMs that you want on there, go ahead and just go to restart. And you, once you restart emulation station at the top there, what it's gonna do is pretty much just refresh uh, it's search for those games and you should have some pop-up after that. Now once you restart the system You'll be greeted to a different looking screen. Of course you still have the RetroPie configuration But for any ROM that it actually detects it will then populate that with the system that it needs So in this case I put Mega Man X on there because it's one of my favorite games and I do actually own the game So I don't have to worry about any of that and you can see here it now gives us an option for Super Nintendo Which is great because if I go in here and you pick Mega Man X it will then start the emulator that it needs and it will boot it up. So now we're in here guys playing Mega Man X, just like that. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It works well and it can do a lot of other systems. You can do crazy amounts of systems on this thing, guys. It would take me forever to show you all of them. You can do PS1, you can do Nintendo 64, you can do Game Boy Advance even. Yeah, Game Boy Advance. <laughs> um, and it works well. It works very well actually, like surprisingly well, um, to the point where you can pretty much put every ROM if you really want to get that crazy. Yes, you can do that. Nothing's really stopping you technically, but um, once you're in, you're in, you're playing. 
And it, uh, like I said, it plays well. It's going through HDMI, and the Game Boy Advance games look good. This is, uh, of course, a Super Nintendo game, and it, it, obviously it runs really well. I'm using the Xbox One controller, and it works fine. It detects uh, Xbox or 360, or the SNES Doe does also work along with the NES Doe, especially the Pro one, which is nice. I recommend getting one of these guys. Um, it, it, it's a cool system. It really is. It's The entire setup is awesome. You just hit the start and select and you're back to the main menu here. You can see I have Mega Man X. It makes sense to me to get one of these. One, it's a really cool computer if you're a fan of these little computers that are, that are super powerful and punch well above their weight, obviously, especially for a $35 computer can do all this. Check the description, guys, if you have any questions about this. I'll also leave a really cool to written tutorial for setting up RetroPie because it is a pretty, it can be kind of an intense setup and it's nice to have some written work that you can just, you can just go right through without having to keep pausing and watching a video. But I hope you guys enjoyed this look at the RetroPie. One of my favorite uh, programs for the Raspberry Pi and in general, I mean, seriously, 35 bucks, another 11 for a setup and then a memory uh, memory cards like what 15 20 bucks for a decent one why not that's it for now guys i will see you next time